Hi there, Mike McArthur from the Oshkosh Public Library, ready to wow everybody with some more Librarian Learns. This is the series where I take a look at some local Oshkosh history that I thought was interesting or I'd heard about or someone asked me about while I was working at the library. Today, I'm gonna to be taking a look at a unique figure in Oshkosh's history who had a pretty profound impact on the city and someone whose uh, face I actually see every day, Alberta Kimball. Wife of Miles Kimball, she worked as the president of the Miles Kimball Company for decades. She was a philanthropist, an astute businesswoman, and general uh, all-around booster for Oshkosh, Alberta Kimball left a lasting impact on the city that she called home for over 60 years. Alberta Kimball was born Alberta Sorger in Nuremberg, Germany on December 8, 1906. She immigrated to Milwaukee with her family in 1913. In 1926, she meets and marries uh, Miles Kimball in Orland, Indiana. 1928, Miles Kimball graduates from the University of Michigan, and two years later, in 1930, the couple moved to Oshkosh, where uh, Miles becomes the manager of a male advertising firm called Dean W. Gear Company. In 1934, Miles, Dean Gear, and Robert Murray found one of the nation's first mail order firms, which special what they got their start specializing in uh, personalized Christmas cards. When Miles became the president of the company, Alberta became the secretary and director. In 1940, the Kimballs took sole ownership of the company and renamed it the Miles Kimball Company. Alberta was named vice president in 1944. Uh, so the couple uh, spent a lot of time traveling the country looking for items in their catalog. They had one daughter, uh, Mary Louise, who ended up residing, getting married and residing in California. Miles Kimball tragically died at the young age of 43 on December 9th, 1949. Alberta then became the president of the company and remained so for the next 30 plus years, which is should really speak to her business acumen that a woman was leading such a large company in the 1940s when that was not really a thing that happened. What really always impressed me about her was her dedication to Oshkosh and the number of unique projects that she financed uh, or spearheaded either very openly or through her uh, kind of anonymously through her philanthropy. In 1967, Kimball Broadcasting was founded and was uh, one of the first FM radio stations in Wisconsin. Uh, it was founded as WNAM-FM, and it served the Oshkosh area until about 1978. She was also instru an instrumental backer of The Paper, a short-lived uh, short morning paper, a daily morning paper that was kind of set up to rival the Oshkosh Northwestern. Uh, it won multiple awards for its printing. It was incredibly high quality, uh, but it was weird to have two major daily papers in one town, uh, especially the, the town the size of Oshkosh. And so it only ran for a short amount of time between 1967 and 1970. If you ever want to look at those papers, we have the whole run on microfilm at the library. Uh, Alberta was also active founding a number of companies, including the Miles Kimball Production Company, the Kimball Resources Inc., which brokered natural gas for companies like the Ford Motor Company. Uh, she founded the Fox River Fiber Company uh, in De Pere in 1989. But really what sticks in my mind is how dedicated she was to Oshkosh, particularly downtown Oshkosh, uh, which had started really falling on hard times you know, towards the late uh, 50s and certainly by the mid 1960s. Uh, the biggest one that you could still physically see here would be the Park Plaza Mall. She backed the creation of what was billed as the first downtown enclosed mall in the country and opened in 1970. Urban renewal projects like this were, were typical, but what was unusual about this was that it was private funds, mostly from Alberta Kimball, uh, to get this project going. It was a $10 million project involved raising 33 buildings of, that were covering an area of about 16 acres along the river. It included closing off streets, pulling up and rerouting railroad tracks. Like I said, the mall opened in 1970 and was a big hit. What I think is most important about this was that it really signaled this transition from kind of the riverfront and downtown being a sort of industrial center, slowly becoming a more recreational, commercial, and residential center, which is pretty much what you see today. 
The mall, as probably you, many of you remember, had a really good run for about two decades, but kind of fell on hard times in the by the mid '90s, and was sold a number of times, and now operates as mostly office space with some few other businesses there and kind of open event space. Alberta and the Miles Kimball Corporation were also instrumental in getting the Hilton Hotel built in 1986. She founded the Miles Kimball Foundation in 1951 and served as a president until 1980 and a trustee until 92. She also founded the Alberta S. Kimball Charitable Foundation. She often donated anonymously. Alberta Kimball clearly holds a special place in the library's heart uh, because after a, 19, a failed referendum in 1990 to get a new library, she anonymously at the time uh, donated $5 million towards the renovation and building of a new library, as long as the city could match the funds. Which is very reminiscent and almost exactly how the library got built uh, originally in 1899. She also made other large contributions to organizations like the Chamber of Commerce Building, the Oshkosh Christian School, and the Oshkosh Civic Auditorium at West High School. Again, done anonymously, the Kimballs gave about 30% of the original funds to build the Civic Auditorium. The Civic Auditorium, as it was originally known, was officially renamed the Alberta Kimball Auditorium in 1998. The Miles Kimball uh, Corporation was sold to a Canadian company named Torstar in 1980, but it was interesting that when it was sold, Alberta specified that a certain number uh, amount of the profits still always be funneled to the Miles Kimball Foundation, therefore ensuring that the charitable giving could continue to be supported and she could continue to funnel uh, funds to the city which she cared about so so dearly. Uh, Alberta served as a chairman of the foundation until 1990 and on October 27th, 1996, after a long bout of illness, uh, Alberta Kimball passed away. Uh, She is buried in Lakeview Cemetery. So hey, I got to learn something. If you like these videos, want to see more, hit like, hit subscribe, blah, 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 share, comment. Do you have any stories about Alberta Kimball? Love to hear it. Tell your stories in the comments. And with that, I'll see you later.